So guys, um, welcome back to the ending of the week. The week was an amazing one. Um, we are here today again as we used to come to analyze what we did during the week and then look at um basically what we are going to be looking at for Monday and then um for the whole of next week. We are here to um do a market recap on what we did during the week, which is a very, very um, important something for us to always do every week. At the end of every week, you should go over your trades and um, reanalyze what you did during the week. Did you make any mistakes? Did you make any profits? Did you lose money? Did you do anything you were not supposed to do? Did you go against your own trading plan? Very, very important to do all of that because it's going to set you up for next week it's going to set it up for the coming week so first um we are going to look at gbp usd which was the first currency pair we looked at um on monday which was the first currency pair we looked at on monday unfortunately we couldn't upload um a video on monday because of um, some technical issues that we faced so on gbp usd um remember we talked about the um uptrend which the market started um early april the market started the uptrend making higher highs and then higher lows um somewhere around 17th of um july this month the market made a higher high and then currently now we are retracing back to the fibonacci area and then also for the third touch of the trend line which is a very very important one for us to focus on and for the sake of next week, this will be our own um, forest forecast because I wouldn't be uploading any video for next week on forest forecast because of um, the market hasn't really uh, come into the areas, the point of interest, the areas of interest which we laid out for, for this week. So this week was basically um, some consolidating market and then the market didn't really move. Um, to where we wanted the market to go before we start buying or selling from the ideal point. Are you guys with me? Are you yes. guys? Yes. Okay, so for GBP USD, we are still looking for the market to come down here, make our, uh, give us a third touch of this trend line, also the Fibonacci level swing from swing low to the last high the market made this will be an ideal point um going long on gbp usd which we are still hoping and then we are still waiting for the market to um come into this area before we see a continuation to the upside you might also be seeing another view here we do have a resistance level here which we have seen that the market has acted um, on it today, which uh, if you go down to the four hour time frame, you see that this area is a previous area of resistance. This area here is a previous area of resistance, previous area of resistance. So the market came right into here to uh, induce bias, the early bias in the market, which is a normal thing. If you don't know really, if you don't really know what is happening in the market, which is a normal thing. When good did this, I also informed you guys that uh, anybody going early on good will definitely be caught on good. Uh, and then after some while, we saw good decline back to the 50%, uh, the golden zone, sorry, and then retested the ascending trend line, which we had on the good chart. So this is what I'm looking at for GBP USD for next week. This, uh, this movement we have now is just to retest this descending um, trend line, which is also a potential counter trend line towards the market reaching around this area. Once we see a break and then a retest again, then we buy from this zone to the upside towards this high and then potentially the negative 27 FIB extension we do have here. The negative around um, 1.31421. So this will be my own focus for next week still waiting on the market to come back to to uh retest the golden zone which is a very very tantamous 
uh, point for us in the market before we decide to get long on GBPUSD. But for now, if you are not on the counter trend, you should just be waiting and then patiently looking out for when the market does move to our own area of interest. So that is it for GBPUSD. Any questions? No, not for me. Okay. Dave, what about you? Dave, I can't hear you. So let's move on to the next currency pair we have on the list. Wow. No questions for me. So the next currency pair we do have is GBPJPY. Uh, GBPJPY made uh, that, that imagination as if it has started going um, to the upside. If you look on the four hour time frame, you can see that after we formed the morning star, the market started going to the upside. But unfortunately, the market um, declined again, which is another evident that the market hasn't really um, started going up because if you see this also is the previous area of support you can see the market rallying from this um, zone here yeah? depending on how the market uh, reacts to this key level here yeah? because if you look at this this was a previous area of resistance the market broke it tested it and the market is still supposed to come back and then retest it again. But then if you are looking at this from a technical analysis point, if you look at the weekly time frame, we do have this um, ascending trend line, which we have seen, um, which started around September 2022. You can see how the market has been very much, um, the market has been very much respecting this uh, trend line. So, Currently now I'm waiting for the market to come down into this zone. And then um, we again retest this um uh, we again retest this trend line because this is the ideal point. If we have this trend line acting as support, so we should be looking forward towards um GBP JPY coming down to this level uh before we can see a further break of this uh, counter trend line. You can see how I drew my counter trend line before we can see before that break of this counter trend line to push market to the upside. So this is what I'm expecting on GBP JPY for now. But for the meantime, uh, I while if you are not in the short, if you are not shorting GBP JPY, you shouldn't be doing anything um rather than waiting for the market to reach at the point of interest around this uh this supply area. This is a supply area guys. This is a supply area. I'm going to I want to also talk about supply and then demand, how you can identify them in the market. This is a supply area. This whole area now is a supply area in the market, which is an ideal point for the market to reach before we see that uh, continuation to the upside. So this is um this is what I'm looking out for for GBP GPY for next week. Are we asking any questions? No, I haven't got anything. I'll just put my hand up if I've got any questions. Okay. So and for GBP and for Euro GBP, um, we were waiting for the market to come around this area before we see um further before we see further trade the downside. But then um still um still yet I'm not convinced that the market is um, ready to go, uh, the market is ready to go down simply because we have broken um, right above this um, this trend line, we have broken right above this descending trend line, right from early May, 2024, we have broken um, right above it currently now. So what I'm going to be waiting for next week is if the market comes back into this, uh, 
if the market comes back into this supply zone here, yeah, which is also the resistance, you can see that this area now is the supply zone, which is also resistance. If the market happens to come back around this area and then gives us that M um, pattern on the four hour time frame, then we should be going long, we should be going short on uh, Euro GBP to the downside. But for now, no trade signal, no entry signal at all on this uh, particular market. So we should we should still wait for the market to give us a very convincing pattern before we decide to jump on um this trade. The next I have is gold. Gold uh really really did it for us for this week. While I was talking about gold um last week was because we had this massive uptrend today. We have this massive rally to the upside. The market went into um the market went into consolidation. Now you can see how the market um, was respecting this ascending trend line. This ascending channel, sorry. You can see how the market was respecting this ascending channel. So what, what happened was that uh, the market the market gave us uh the market gave us a pattern it was following. You can see that the market broke above the previous high we had here. Which rejected from this zone here, and then we had a we had a demand zone here, which the market has again uh, given us that yes, this is a further demand zone for the market to continue going to the upside. What I actually did was just to take out my Fibonacci from the last swing low the market made to the last swing high the market made, and then I waited for the market to come back into the golden zone which uh initially i had my own buy limit set usually the market um likes to retest the 0.618 fib extension but for me sometimes the market will just tap in and then continue going up but that is um ideally for day traders but for swing traders i had i had to place my own stop loss i had to place my own buy limit in the middle of the 0 0.5 and then 0 0.618 FIB extension. And then when the market came in there, it activated. And then my stop loss came right below this um this demand zone, the market made there. My stop loss came right below it. My stop loss came right below it, which uh, we are currently floating in profit now are you guys still with me yes so which we are floating currently in profit now so um from next week we are still expecting a further sorry So for next week, we are still expecting a further break above of this uh, counter trend line for a massive rally to the upside. So where my expected target is um, at this negative 27 FIB extension around this area, which is 2535.81 per hour. So this is where I'm going to be expecting go to rally. But for, for swing trading and it's, uh each rule you should always take partials around the 100 percent retracement from here from here if you enter the trade from here to here you should always take partials around this area because the market there's a there's a tendency for the market to always come down and retest the 0 0.21 fib extension before we see the market rally to the upside but for me i'm not going to be closing my trades till after one month if we get good rallying up to the negative 27 pv extension is going to be a very very massive one for us so where my expected um target for gold to reach will be um 28 2800 this will be my own expected target for gold to reach will be around this area in the next couple of months now it's not going to happen overnight definitely to take months before 
it will reach there. Why I'm saying it is because if you look at the weekly time frame, any rally that you've seen before equals to what is going to happen um tomorrow. So what I did was I calculated from the breakout of this consolidation to what we had finally right above there. Then I measured it to where I currently entered the market around this area. Measured it so our overall target should be around 2800. 20, but for the meantime, we are only targeting our own um swing trading, we're only targeting the hundred percent retracement, and then we are targeting uh the negative twenty one fib extension, the negative twenty one fib extension. So this will be our own first level take profit, and then around the negative twenty one, around the negative um twenty one fib extension will be a. Uh, uh, final take profit awaiting a retest around 25k for the market to continue going to the upside so this is all i have on good if you have any questions please ask me please if you have any question ask me are you guys with me Yeah. No questions. I don't have any. <laughs> huh? No, I didn't have any. I didn't have a question. The, 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 the last one I wanted to talk about was NAS 100. But although I didn't go long on NAS 100 because um I saw the difference, the difference, um, the difference of price, the gap we had from the trend line on NAS 100 and then um S and P 500. I saw the difference we had there. So I decided I decided that S and P 500 was a very good one for me to go long on. It was a very good one for me to go long since it presented a very good um, buying opportunity from the last low we had. You can see how the market touched, um, you can see how the market touched the bottom of this. So since it presented this opportunity to me, I had to choose um, S&P 500 to, to NAS 100. So I had to choose S and P five hundred to NAS one hundred. This was the reason why I went uh, long on um S and P five hundred immediately on the four hour time frame. This was um around where I went long on S and P five hundred around this area here. Yeah? Went long around this area. So we are currently floating in profit. We should have um the market reaching back to the hundred percent retracement. Overall target will be as calculated. Overall target will be as calculated from here to here. From there to there. Look at the weekly time frame from there to there. And from here to here. The overall target will be around this area here. Around 6,000. Though I approximated it to be a psychological number. As I approximated it to be a psychological number. So it will be a very, very good trade for somebody to enter. So looking forward towards um the market reaching this area, this will be a very, very massive trade um, to cash out from. My stop losses came right below this area. So this is all I did during the week. I hope you guys um learned something from it. This is all I yeah. did during the other than this, I didn't I didn't really um do anything. I was just looking at the chat, doing other things. I didn't really do nothing much at all. Um I wanted to ask you, you're saying you are expecting a 50% retracement on this again. No, I said hundred percent retracement. Hundred percent. Okay. 
Hundred percent retracement is always at the last high the market made. If you are buying, it's always at the last high the market made. If you are selling, it's always at the last low the market made. Hundred percent retracement to take half your profit from the market and then move your stop loss to break even. Allow the market okay. to the overall direction. So imagine if this okay. market um reaches this area, and I opened. Currently now, I opened a lot size of 1.00 on my 50K account, on my funded 50K account. So if this market reaches um around um 5679.65, which is 100% retracement, and then I've made mm -hmm. like $4,000, I'm permitted to take $2,000 off the market and then move my stop loss to break even. So take for instance, the market, um, take for instance, the market reached here and then we have a little consolidation the market breaks above this is where i will now go down to the four hour time frame on a closure of a four hour candlestick right above here i will still open another position now if this position stops me out guess what i'm still in profit of um, the two thousand dollar that was left here i'm still in profit whatever the market does above here i'm still going to enter because i'm capitalizing up of um, what i had previously the trade i had moved to break even yeah. so imagine if i open on that position yeah, and then it goes right to the overall target i should be making like three thousand dollars from this trade so two thousand dollars the initial one i closed um the initial one i closed at the hundred percent retracement plus um, two thousand dollars that I moved to break even. Imagine if it didn't stop me out, and then it uh reached to this point to um it reached to the overall take profit. So this area, yeah. uh, let's just say um I made about four thousand eight hundred dollars from that, plus this um this other trade I later opened, which let's just say I made about three thousand dollars. So from one trade I've made like um uh, this is five. This is five. This is um nine thousand eight hundred dollars. Let's just say I've made like roughly ten thousand dollars from one trade, just focusing on one currency. I know it's going to be more than what they are seeing here if it actually reaches the overall target. So I'm just looking at markets that will give us uh that money that we are waiting for, so that we can buy more profits, you know, and then capitalize from it i just want us to buy more profits guys 50k profits yeah well okay that is nice but is is it late for a an entry now or probably till next week um i would say i would say um it's late for an it's, it's not late for an entry provided we haven't still um broken above this trend line here the counter trend line we are still trading. Yeah. We need it. But I know this pattern very well. Don't be deceived. I know this pattern very well. This is an uptrend pattern, which has happened yeah. quite often on other charts. Once you see this chart displaying on other charts, you know exactly what um, is going on. So I've seen this pattern very well. So if, if I'm going to add another position to this, what I'm going to say... Yeah. Now that I've added one here, what I'm going to simply do is to wait for a break above. We have, a, we have a resistance level here. You can see that the first time the market came here, it rejected. Yeah. It was that resistance level. The second time the market came, it rejected. So this is an ideal um resistance level for us now. So if the market eventually gets above here, should be looking at another entry around there, just like um uh, what Bitcoin did when I was calling the loans. Everybody was just saying, some people were just saying, my friends that trade crypto, I was just telling them they were just saying it's not your time. So I was just telling them this was the same thing it did, and then some faithful days the market just rallied all the way to the upside. So we are not missing the opportunity on SPS five hundred for now. Yeah. And it's already gone long it's already gone long so we should be looking at another entry around after we see the break of this counter trend line 
you're looking at another yeah. then the retest uh to the upside so that is just it for today's class well um i also wanted to ask on something you know, there was this pair you dropped on the group um gpchf but yes you yeah. were expecting a yes. of the trend line back yeah. but i i've seen a lower high it did uh it did Yes, it did. I saw it also, but I wasn't really interested in it because I had opened some positions. So this is what we have now on the daily time frame. We had if um uh, this market closes like this, then this is the bullish harami the market has formed, the bullish buys inside of the um bearish bar. So for this particular pattern, which is the bullish harami, the market uh suggest for us to go long on it so i saw this but then i was just swayed away by other markets i was trading so for this you can see that the market has started to go up the market made a higher a higher low on the one hour time frame so if you were watching this this was this was where you would have just entered this market i just you yeah. have gone long on this market and your stop loss will come right below remember the stop loss is always right below the retest like um let's say 10 or 15 pips uh below it because the market can just come back to retest it before we see that a massive rally upside again so if you are looking at um another trade entry on gbpchf allow the market to come back to this supply zone here yeah, which is also a previous area of resistance previous area of support allow the market to come back um, to this uh, area of support to retest, then you get a W pattern on the one hour time frame to then buy this trade to the upside. But then I'm not interested on GBPCHF. I found um, a better option, which is S&P 500. If it keeps going up, it just continues going up just like that till it decides that, yes, I'm done going up. Let me start coming down. So, but this is a very, very good opportunity. This is a very, very good opportunity. First touch, second touch, and then third touch. Also, um, if you look at the Fibonacci, I think, if you look at the Fibonacci, I think this is also retesting, um, this is also retesting this area of Fibonacci. Do uh, it's not really really perfect like that, but then this was what I saw that made me call the longs on um GBPCHF in the group. But it was a very very nice trade. What I was um even looking at for for the market to come back to this uh demand zone here, yeah, it yeah, make, that was what I was expecting. make perfect sense because this yeah. is something that happened on GBP AUD to make perfect sense. If you go back to the weekly time frame. This will make a perfect sense if this comes back here, yeah, makes a double bottom to the upside. This will be the yeah. this will be the first leg, and this will be the second leg before we see that massive rally to the upside. So, but then I'm I will still be watching if the market comes back here and then rejects from there, comes back to so retest this area to make it a double bottom. I will be executing once we have the first bullish engulfing, um, the first or second bullish engulfing candlestick from this area. If the market does that, then that will be a very, very nice one. Then um, my other trades would have been in profit um, to allow me enter because I don't want to risk too much on my account. I want to just manage yeah. so that I can uh, make something from it to buy more profits to allow me to trade different markets whenever I want to. So this is just what um, I'm expecting for this GBP CHF. Let's just quickly look at GBP AUD also. Yeah. GBP AUD also. So from the weekly time frame, uh, the, the double bottom formed which was a very, very nice one. We saw, we all saw this double bottom, uh, which formed the time, as of the time, the market was still trading around this area here. 
So what we are going to be expecting is for the market to retrace back to the neckline. This will be an ideal point for the market to come back to the neckline, giving us that opportunity to go long again on um GBP, uh, GBP AUD, take care of Fibonacci from the last low the market made to the current um high the market has made. Go back to the daily time frame. You can see how the market uh rejected from the the area is supposed to reject from. Uh, the market started falling back, made a pin bar on the daily time frame, which I still feel that um uh, on the four hour time frame the market might still come back here to make that double. Just watch out for a double pattern, a double top on the four hour time frame. This is this is this is what we had on um USD JPY uh, when the market was still trading like this. Let me just quickly show you guys so that we can be all following along before I come back to this now. That was on the four hour time frame. So this is what we had on uh, USD JPY around this area. Are you guys seeing around this area? The market yeah. has declined. And then let me go back to GBP AUD. So the market has declined. Now we are waiting for a further climb up, further climb up to make that double bottom, that double top before we see it finally collapsing to uh finally collapsing to the neckline of the double bottom we saw on the weekly time frame. That was why I told um kicks not to close our own trade. Understand if we didn't close, just yeah. maybe, even if it stops you out, you still have a better chance and opportunity to re-enter again that will give you um uh, some sense of confidence to even enter with um a tangible lot size that will make you a good money from the market so that was just all i saw on gbp uh, AUD. the market is really really um simple to read when you know what um is doing but then you have to yeah. you have to also follow protocols um, what the market is doing. So if definitely this comes back here, so looking at some sort of rejections around this area to so then pull short on this, breaking the neckline. Um, for you to not panic, just wait for the break of the neckline of um the potential double top that will form. If we see the break of that neckline, and you wait for pullback to trade down to this area. From here to here, will be a, a very, very um good to reward ratio for you to trade, uh, for you to capitalize from. So it's a very, very simple. Yeah. Or you can um simply wait for the market to come back to the uh to the resistance, to the neckline, sorry. Now this is also a demand zone we have on this. This is also a demand zone we have. You can see from here, from here to here. It's a perfect demand zone. So if you are looking at, if you are looking to enter, don't just enter when the market reaches here. Enter at the first bullish candlestick you see closing above uh, this whole demand zone. And this is the daily time frame. So if you are looking to enter very early, you make sure that the market touches somewhere around there. So your stop loss will be minimized. Your stop loss will be minimized. Always um, at the 100% retracement. The stop loss will be around um 77 pips right below the what we have here. So this is for early enters, early people who will be entering the market. But if you want to allow the market to give you that kind of um trade um signal that it is ready to go, this is where um uh, we normally set buy stops right above here because buy stops are very, very important. As swing traders buy stops you set buy stops right above here and then if you are setting buy stops right above here then your stop losses has to be very very wide stop losses has to come right below uh, this this demand zone we have in the market your day profit will have to be very very um also wide this is like one to two 2.5 one to 2.5 uh, reward ratio 
So this is how it will look for further trading to the upside. Buy stops, once it activates, the, it continues going higher, 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 like that. So that is all we have for today. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Are the other people still with us? Yeah, Kik should still be with us. So I'm done for today. I'm going to, up, going to upload um this video to YouTube so we can also watch. I'll also go and watch it to see what um is going on. If you have any questions, please do ask. You can always chat me up on WhatsApp on anything you want at all. We'll talk about yeah. it. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, so we call it today. We call it tonight. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Good night, okay. everyone. Good night, everybody. Good night.